Hello everyone. I welcome you to the online tutorial for web application penetration testing. Today, there are millions of websites over the internet. These websites are just increasing day by day. What is increasing at the same time are the hacking incidents as well. As per Forbes magazine, 30,000 websites are hacked every day. Oh, that's a pretty huge number. Imagine if eBay or Amazon, that is an e-commerce website, is vulnerable to any of the security flaws. You could buy any of the costly products for maybe $1 or $2. Imagine if a Swiss bank account or Swiss banking application is vulnerable. You could transfer thousands of dollars from someone else's account to your account. Hacking of these websites not only lead to financial losses, but also lead to loss of reputation. Considering that in mind, I introduce you to Web Application Penetration Testing Course. This training course is designed to concentrate and cover all possible web application security vulnerabilities. This training includes creative diagrams, examples, and easy to understand concepts with practical demonstration. I'm pretty much sure you will enjoy this training with me. This is a small disclaimer. This course is for educational purpose only. Do not use any of the hacking tips or methods that have been described in this training for hacking on of any of the websites without authorized permission. Hacking is illegal and might land you behind bars. Copying and distributing of this training material in part or full is not permitted. We have used sample applications. We have set up some sample test beds to give you uh, adequate demonstrations during this training course. This training is designed for everyone. This training is designed for the students who are interested in learning or making a career in ethical hacking. It's designed for the developers. There are a large number of developers working across multinational companies designing beautiful, complex applications. But what they might be missing is security. This training is also designed for pen testers who want to learn new concepts or want to brush up their concepts. It is also designed for security auditors who are looking to audit their application from a holistic perspective. Coming to the course content. We will be looking into the introduction of web application security. We will be covering the various security concepts for the same. We will look at the web application security vulnerabilities that an application might face. We will also cover a lot of demonstrations with adequate examples. We have also ensured that we have included a number of quizzes at the end of each of the modules so that you can keep a track on as to how you're doing throughout this training. We will also do an impact analysis for each of the security vulnerabilities to understand how threatful it could be to an application. And at the last, we will be covering the mitigation steps as to how you can secure your application for that particular vulnerability. Okay, I'm pretty much excited to walk you through this beautiful training course for web application security. Let's look at the introduction to web application security. What is web application security? This definition is taken from Wikipedia. Application security encompasses measures taken throughout the code's lifecycle to prevent gaps in the security policy of an application or the underlying system through flaws in the design, development, deployment, upgrade, or maintenance of the application. Oh, that's a pretty complicated definition. Let's simplify it for you. Application security is nothing but securing an application so that the hackers do not hack into your application. So, why is there a need for application security? It is to prevent attackers from hacking our application. About 70 to 80 percent attacks occur at application layer. 80 percent of the web applications are vulnerable. Custom codes is equal to human error. Developers write some custom code, but who are not aware of security. 
they might introduce some loopholes or errors in the code which might open up to security vulnerabilities. Lack of security knowledge among developers. Security not being implemented into the SDLC, nothing but secure development life cycle. We'll be covering about SDLC in, an, in the next module. And then we have delivery deadlines is equal to open loopholes. Developers have delivery deadlines. They are under pressure to deliver. They might introduce loopholes. What is secure development life cycle? The software development, sorry, I'm. The software development life cycle is a process which is followed to develop a software product. It is a structured way of building software applications. Most organizations have a process in place for developing software. This process may at times be customized on the organizational requirement and the framework followed by the organization. The knowledge of SDLC is very important for anyone who wants to understand the secure software development life cycle, which we will be covering in the next slide. So let's understand a bit on the SDLC. It basically starts off with the requirement, a software requirement specification or an SRS is a document which records the expected behavior of the system or the software which needs to be developed. The next phase is design. Software design is nothing but the blueprint of the system which once completed can be provided to the developers for code development. Based on the components in the design, they are translated into software modules, functions, libraries, etc. And these pieces put together form a software system. We move on to the next one. That's coding. During this phase, the blueprint of the software is turned to reality by developing the source code of the entire application. Time taken to complete the development depends upon the size of the application and the number of programs programmers involved. The next is testing. Once the application development is completed, it is tested for various issues like functionality, performance and so on. This is just to ensure that the application is performing as expected. If there are any issues, these issues are fixed before and after going to production depending on the nature of the issue and the urgency to go live for the application. After this, we move on to the deployment. Once the application is ready to go live, it is deployed on a production server in this phase. If it is developed for a client, the deployment happens in a client premise or a data center where the client wants to get the application installed. This was a brief on the SDLC. We will look at, in the next slide, we will look at the secure software development lifecycle, which looks at implementing security in each of these phases. Okay, so what is SSDLC? It's nothing but Secure Software Development Lifecycle. It stresses on incorp incorporating security into the software development lifecycle. Every phase of SDLC will stress on security over and above the existing set of activities. Incorporating SSDLC into an organization's framework has many benefits to ensure a secure product. Okay, so let's start with the requirements. In the requirements phase, we will be gathering the security requirements. We will then be doing a threat modeling. Threat modeling is nothing but a structured approach to implement security into the application. We will also look at the compliance goals. Each of the companies might have certain compliance goals to meet certain security standards. All these will be taken care in the requirements phase. Moving on to the next one, that's the design phase. In the design phase, we will be carrying out an architecture review. Architecture review will be to understand what all components from a security perspective can be implemented into the application. What all security standards can be followed or implemented in the design phase. We will also be doing a security test planning and also threat modeling. In the next phase, that's coding. In the coding, we will look at the secure, we will do secure code review. That is once the code 
is written for a particular application, we will identify security vulnerabilities at the code level. We will also ensure that the coding best practices are followed in this phase. Once the coding is done and the interface is ready, it will be tested for vulnerability assessment. We will do a various test cases from security perspective to see if the application is vulnerable to any of the security issues. Once the testing is completed, the application will be deployed on a particular web server. So we need to ensure that this web server is hardened. Hardened meaning whenever you default, do a default installation of any of the web servers, a lot of junk files, a lot of sample applications get installed. A lot of default accounts get installed. So we need to ensure that all these accounts are removed. The server is hardened. This is a phase which, which ensures that security is built in each of the phases. Okay, so let's look at the advantages of security in SDLC. It helps in building security from start. It helps in a decreased overall cost. In today's scenario, a lot of vendors, once they build the application at the end, once the product is ready, they come for security testing. We do the security testing. We send them a report identifying all the security issues. It becomes very difficult for them to patch these vulnerabilities. They might have to rebudget. They might have to alter the architecture. They might have to do a lot of code changes, which increases the overall cost of the project. So building the security from start not only reduces the cost, but also helps in building a secure application. It increases the security awareness among the developers and also helps in a stronger implementation of security into the application. That's pretty much it about SSDLC. There are basically three types of application security testing. Starting with the first one, the first one is white box security testing. White box is like it's a clear box, it's a glass box or a transparent box wherein you can see everything. You have the full visibility into the code, the application interface, etc. In this security tester has access to the entire source code. White box testing involves a detailed security audit of the internal logic and the structure of the code. In order to perform a white box testing of an application, the security tester needs to possess knowledge on the security standards of coding as well as testing. The next one is black box security testing. Black box security testing is like a black hole. You do not know what is inside. You do not have access to the code. You do not have knowledge of the application. This technique of testing without any knowledge of the interior working of the application is nothing but black box testing. Uh, pretty much an example would be like, I give you a website to test, but I do not give you the credentials of the login page. What do you do? You just have access to the one page and you need to hack into the application. That's nothing but black box testing. The main disadvantage of black box testing is it, it has limited coverage and it's not that efficient. The next one is gray box testing. The gray box testing offers a combined benefits of both black box and white box wherever possible. The gray box security testers do not rely on the source code. Instead, they rely on the interface definition and the functional specifications. Based on the limited information available, a gray box tester can design excellent test scenarios, especially around the interfaces. An example could be a Facebook application. You have the login credentials, you have access to the inner modules, you can view the interfaces and the functionalities. So you can test the login page, you can test the inner modules as well. This is nothing but gray box testing. This is one of the most popular kind of security testing in terms of cost and coverage. Okay, so in an ideal scenario, the best kind of security testing would be a combination of both white box and gray box. Okay, so before we move on to the core concepts of application security, we need to understand what is OWASP. 
OASP is nothing but Open Web Application Security Project. It's an online community develop, dedicated to web application security. This community includes corporations, educational organizations, and individuals from around the world. You can visit this site at www.oasp.org. This site has an enormous details about all the possible web application security concepts. It has good amount of testing guidelines and information which will help you in building up your career in ethical hacking. Okay, so before we move on to the other modules or I can call it as juicy security concepts, we need to understand where an application is deployed and what all possible threats an application might face. So, an application is always deployed probably on a web server. Imagine if I'm a user, I'm accessing Gmail application. So I open up my browser, I feed in gmail.com in the address bar, and then I access the Gmail application that's hosted on a web server in the Gmail or the Google premises. This application will in turn talk to the database where all the data is stored. So if I feed in my username and password, it will go to the web server. The web server will make a CGI call. It will fetch the data from the database, give it to me. And if, it, if the data is correct, it will allow me to log in. So as you can see, at each and every layer, there could be a security flaw in your application, be it the web server, be it the database, or the application server. So this is pretty much it in the first module of application security. Thank you.